With all the connections that DC and Marvel Comics have over their long history, but also a lot of the differences these companies have, I think there are a lot of characters in these worlds who could be matched up with one another, even vice versa, they could work well together. But today we're specifically looking at some Marvel characters who would be well suited to go up against particular DC heroes. Now this particular subject was actually requested by someone in my Discord, Shadow Talon 24 and I mean there's just a reason to join the Discord right now as we bounce off ideas with one another or you can even request video ideas for me and eventually, hopefully, I will get around to them. And you know what, while you've probably been enticed to join the Discord right now, why don't you just click that subscribe button if you haven't yet. I like to think there is really no right or wrong answers in this situation. I think there are so many options of Marvel villains who could be great additions to a particular hero's rogues gallery. I'm just going to focus on two particular Marvel villains for every DC hero, and the heroes we will be looking at for this video is of course Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Green Lantern, and Aquaman. Starting off with Batman, first of all, before I give you the two options for him, I do truthfully believe that Spider-Man's rogues gallery could fit Batman any day. I also think that Batman's rogues gallery could fit Spider-Man. I think both of these characters could translate to each other's villains very, very well. I think Batman would have just as much success with Spider-Man's villains as he more or less has success with his own villains. However, the two I want to pinpoint here is Green Goblin and or Kraven. When you look at Green Goblin, he is the Joker of the Spider-Man villains, but I do imagine that two billionaires going at it with their own gadgets, their own power suits, their own vehicles is a very interesting fight. I think the symbolic nature of Batman and Green Goblin would share a lot of similarities to Batman and Joker. I even think a lot of the dialogue the two characters would have with one another would have those similarities. Not just Green Goblin, I also think that Norman Osborn would happen to be a threat to Wayne Enterprises. You could have a story where Norman runs into Gotham City and starts changing things and making things look a little bit better than Wayne Enterprises did, simply to uproot his company and his family name within the city so that Norman can gain control for himself. The Goblin has a Joker persona and the man Norman has a Lex Luthor persona, and both of those sides of the coin could go up and pair perfectly against Batman. Now, for Kraven, we all know this character to be somebody who's always looking for his next big challenge. This is a man that we've seen defeat Spider-Man with the symbiote. This is a man who is capable of doing extraordinary things, and whereas Kraven may be a human, he does unhuman-like things very similar to Bruce Wayne Batman. I have this feeling that if Kraven ever came across the Bat Creature, he would be absolutely infatuated with this idea that there is another human out there doing things that a normal human cannot do. And this idea that somebody who is at the peak human condition, possibly even higher than Kraven himself, would get him very fascinated and very very interested in not just meeting the Batman person, the Batman creature, but being able to fight him, having the honor to duke it out. I also think that a Batman vs. Kraven fight would go absolutely crazy. That is something I think all of us would love to see. Next up for Superman, the two villains I thought of for him was Doctor Doom and actually Juggernaut. So starting with Doctor Doom, and let me remind everyone, I am not completely versed in the Marvel world as I am DC, so there are certain things I absolutely don't know. My knowledge is not nearly up to date, but when I think of Doctor Doom, I do get a huge Lex Luthor vibe from the character, and I do get this idea that Superman is absolutely somebody that Doctor Doom would want to go up against 
just a prove that he is not only more powerful than him, but he is far smarter. With Doctor Doom being able to utilize magic, even though Superman is not weak to magic, he is vulnerable, and Doctor Doom could do some serious damage with that. And from what I've heard about a lot of people say about Doctor Doom, he is one of the very few people in both the DC and the Marvel Universe who could potentially out-prep and outsmart somebody like Batman or Lex Luthor. With his power, his determination, his discipline, and all of his vast resources, I find it hard to believe that Doctor Doom wouldn't be able to find a way to stop Superman, or at least give him a very, very good fight. Then the reason I thought of Juggernaut is because I kind of pictured another villain who in a way could be used as a doomsday type threat for Superman. You in a way are putting up an immovable object with Superman against an unstoppable force in Juggernaut. No matter what you do, he simply just will not go down until you take the helmet off. Which I'm pretty sure I'm like 98% right that is how Juggernaut's power works. And we do also have to remember that some of these characters have actually crossed paths or have even even fought before in crossover comic books. And I'm pretty sure Superman and Juggernaut have very quickly duked it out before. I think we do have to remember how powerful Juggernaut can be and believe it or not, how fast he actually is for somebody of his size as well. Whereas Superman would 100% come out on top against somebody like Juggernaut. He has beaten and fought other people just like him and far more powerful in history. I I do think Juggernaut could simply be used as a Superman villain who every now and then just comes back to cause some trouble and to simply be a thorn in Superman's side. And I do think the dynamic of the two characters would be really interesting to read or watch or whatever it might be. Now for Wonder Woman. Before I give you my two options for her, I actually believe she could be solidly well suited for anybody in Thor's rogues gallery. Also, too, Marvel does have a Hades and an Ares and all those Greek god type of characters. I did not want to go with something so simple like that because then it would just kind of feel like a cop-out. So the two characters I went with for Wonder Woman is Gore the God Butcher and Red Skull slash Hydra. Whether or not you want to view Wonder Woman as a god killer, she definitely has the power and the ability to be able to be a god killer. However, she also owns a sword called the God Killer. And Gore the God Butcher is known for going around with his powerful sword killing and destroying all of the gods. And I think Wonder Woman versus Gore would be a super epic powerful matchup in whose god-killing powers would come out on top. And this is more of a superficial opinion, but whereas with Wonder Woman, a lot of her villains are very human-based or ancient god-based, still based around Earth, I think it would be very neat for Wonder Woman to have to deal with a god presence, but instead of being more or less human, she now actually has an alien part of her rogues gallery. Because now you could really see what her power is worth. She's not just defeating gods on Earth, she's now capable of defeating gods in the universe. And then for Red Skull and Hydra, this is more so if Wonder Woman came to man's world during World War II. For example, the way the 2017 Wonder Woman film worked, where she ends up finding out the main reason men are at war is not necessarily because of political divide, it is because of Ares' actions. Getting into the ears of these very imperfect men and capable of turning them on one another, nations against nations. You could do that same idea where Wonder Woman and very possibly Steve Trevor end up finding out that in World War II, it is not just Hitler and the Germans who are the threat, it is in fact Red Skull and Hydra. If they have their way, Hitler and his power will be the least of everyone's worries because 
because Red Skull and Hydra is planning on taking over the entire world. And whereas power may not be Red Skull's strongest suit against Wonder Woman, the organization of Hydra is going to keep her busy. Now for The Flash. I went for something quite different, maybe characters that people wouldn't have thought of. I think there's a lot of people who would think, oh, Quicksilver whenever he's an antagonist, or maybe someone like Speed Demon, who I truthfully don't know much about the character in the first place. So the two characters I went with were Mysterio and, believe it or not, Emma Frost. With Mysterio, I think you are actually gifting him a lot of advantages over a speedster like Barry or Wally. Illusion casting, the deception, even the mind manipulation he can play with his hypnosis and the manipulation of technology. Through his illusions, he can even in a way distort and bend reality. He has somewhat of a similarity to Mirror Master. And just to throw that out there, I think Mirror Master would make a damn near perfect Spider-Man villain. So with all of his augmentations and his ability to pretty much screw with the mind of the Flash. This is once again a character he can simply not speed blitz his way out of it. And that is usually who I tend to find is a great villain for the Flash, is someone that you're not simply just matching speed for speed. Sometimes that is fun, sometimes that is enjoyable to watch or read about. However, I do think if you really want to challenge the Flash, you always have to look at his mind. That is something he can't outrun. Speaking about a battle of the mind, that is why I also threw in Emma Frost, once again, like Quicksilver, when she chooses to be an antagonist. This is a character who I believe has a history of actually being called an Omega level telepath. And whenever you're dealing with a telepath, it does not matter if you're Flash, Batman, Wonder Woman, or Superman. A telepath is very dangerous no matter what because you really have no control over what they do. I think there's a very interesting dynamic you could bring into a relationship with her and the Flash. I don't know necessarily how she acts in Marvel comic books. Perhaps you could maybe do it where Emma Frost actually kind of likes the Flash. Maybe a Batman Catwoman or a Spider-Man Black Cat situation. The Flash now has this female villain that actually kind of likes him and only messes around with him when it suits her, or some twisted villainous way to simply get to him and be around him. Just quickly thinking to, with her solidified version of herself, when she actually admits the frost or the jewel encasing around her body, perhaps it gives her a lot more defense against the Flash whenever he tries to attack her. Now for Green Lantern, and I actually listed two of my favorite Marvel characters of all time, Magneto and Venom. Now Green Lantern does already have a villain in Polaris who can more or less do similar things to Magneto, but come on, it's Magneto. You're not only just dealing with a mutant, you're dealing with one of the most powerful Marvel characters there is. The manipulation of metal on even the smallest atomical form. A guy who probably, if he wanted to, and potentially even has before in comic books, manipulate the iron within your bloodstream. With Magneto only ever focusing on the betterment of mutant life, and Green Lantern being tasked the protection of the sector of Earth, this leaves a situation in which the Guardians and the Green Lantern Corps will always have a problem with Magneto, and then Magneto learning of the existence of Green Lanterns and other emotional spectrum cores, that would be interesting to see what he would think about him and what he would maybe want from them. And then for Venom, the biggest reason why I put him here is because I could only imagine how cool a fight would be between a symbiote and a Green Lantern ring, or any Lantern ring in general, what a Green Lantern would look like if a symbiote actually got onto them. Also, the fact that the symbiote often likes power, and I have a feeling it would be very attracted to Green Lantern rings, and it would not simply want one of them, it would want 
as many as possible. You could even do some sort of Blackest Night situation where the Green Lantern cores all across the universe are almost suffering from this zombie infection in which the symbiotes are taking over their ranks and utilizing the power for itself. I think very often we can look at Venom as someone who only goes up against Spider-Man, but he could be utilized for a huge, almost universal threat. Last for this video, but not least, we're moving into Aquaman, and the two villains I've chosen for him is Hydro-Man and Atuma. These are two characters I really don't know too much about. Hydro-Man I mainly know from the Spider-Man animated series back in the late 90s, early 2000s. I really don't know everything he's capable of doing, but come on, he's water-based. It just makes sense to go up against someone like Aquaman. Whereas Aquaman has potentially mastered the ocean, Hydro-Man is the ocean. He is one with the water. And how do you stop something like that? And then Atuma, another character I know the very bare minimum of. However, what I do know about him is he is, from what I believe, the ocean master of the Marvel Universe. I think he is from a prehistoric clan within Atlantis who was kicked out thousands of years ago and he has basically come back for revenge to take Atlantis for himself. I think the biggest thing with Atuma would simply be that he needs to be rewritten in a sense where he does not feel exactly the same as Ocean Master. He would need a different end goal. He would just need something else that makes him feel different in general. But there you have it. Some Marvel villains who could be well suited for DC heroes. There's other characters that could be well suited for DC heroes that I did not list or I didn't even think of. So just like usual, leave in the comments below some of those ideas, some other Marvel villains I did not mention for Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and whoever else. That is all I have for you on this video, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed it, and until next time, I will talk to you all very soon.